Bonjour everyone, I'm Marlous, a Dutch business owner, and I moved to Burgundy in France in 2019 with my family. And on my channel, I share our slow and simple life here in the French countryside. I talk about brocante, cooking, beautiful places to visit in our region and other parts of France. And every now and then, I do a home tour in which I take you to a gorgeous French house. And I'm happy to share another one of those beautiful houses with you in this video. I recently went on a girls trip with a couple of friends to a gorgeous chateau called Chateau de Parez. It is in Burgundy still but right at the border with the Allier and it's owned by Marco and Muriel, a Dutch couple that had always dreamed of renovating an old huge building and turning it to something beautiful. They have only been here for two years. You are not going to believe this when I show you how much and the incredible work that they have done in only two years time. They have huge plans for this chateau of which the oldest part was built in the 11th century. Actually, it was built by the Secretary of Finance of Louis XIV. We stayed in the Maison de Gardien where the guardian or concierge of the estate would stay and they turned it into a beautiful holiday home. I'm going to share the holiday home with you first, but do keep watching until the end because Muriel invited my friends and me to come see their family's home that's in the oldest part of the chateau that her husband, who is a professional builder, has been renovating over the past year. They want to turn this place into a wedding venue, multiple holiday homes, they want to turn part of the former stables into an orangerie. She has so many plans and such a beautiful vision for this place. I was completely enchanted by it and I'm just thrilled to be able to share it with you. Do let us know what you think about it when you see it. You enter the holiday home through the kitchen and it is a holiday home that can welcome eight people. There are two bedrooms on a ground floor and two smaller bedrooms on the first floor. I couldn't believe this staircase. It was original to the house. And I think when you find a place with these kind of details, there are such treasures. Marco and Muriel have really turned this into a very cozy and comfortable home with a mix of country style furniture, brocante and vintage items, and some more modern touches, which I think is just the right balance for this place.
There is a gorgeous covered terrace outside that you can use and there's also a beautiful garden with herbs and flowers and I am so excited to show you the family home that Muriel and Marco have created. This is not finished. They're still in the middle of all of the renovation works and honestly I was so impressed. I know how much effort, time and blood, sweat and tears go into renovating an old house because I'm doing it myself. So as they say in French, chapeau bas for Marco and Muriel. Let's go inside and discover what it looks like. And uh, there used to be a very big iron gate over there, but that was stolen, I think the farmer said 30 years ago. Just one day he came here to see the cows. It was like, oh, no gate, so that's gone. Marco and Muriel have created their family home in the oldest part of the chateau, which dates back to the 11th century. The facade render was crumbling, and so they took it all off and put back a traditional render. It's important to them to honor the history of the chateau and keep as many original details as they can, and also to restore it in the way that it would have been built back then using the traditional materials. gray and crumbling down mm -hmm. so we took all the stuck off mm -hmm. we cleaned all the stones and we did stuck the way we like it so this is the the old kitchen the way they used to prepare the food in the 11th century so it's entry okay. <laughs> and the tomato floors were here uh, we took them out mm -hmm. and we dug half a meter deep and we found the old, old, old floors. At the pavé. Like yeah, a, yeah, and we covered it carefully and put drainage in because of the uh, the moat. Yeah. So we, because the walls would be very moist otherwise. Wow. I can't resist for comfort. <laughs> it's very big too. Yeah. I so love the blue and the white. This is a table that stood here 400 mm. years. It's the only table. It's the only piece of furniture that originally mm. was from here. That's that's left. This is is the washing place. Yeah, yeah. there's a hole yeah, in it. Yeah, the, water. Uh, yeah. And the sink. Yeah. yeah. And over there, yeah. there's a hole too, and it goes right into the moat. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very modern at that time. Yeah. Yeah. There used to be a water pump here. Oh yeah. And in France, and it was used. Um, they used to have the fire over there. Oh, the fire over there. And yeah, they yeah. took the coals. Yeah, they took it and then underneath it. No, they put it here. They lifted this one. Oh, this is this is, has a conic shape, so it goes smaller. They put the coals in here. Yeah. Oh, and then or put they the pots had on top. Big, yeah, or a big chunk of iron, and then the, the coals and the pots were here, simmering away.
the kitchen island is made with a gorgeous piece of vintage furniture. Muriel and Marco lived near the German border when they lived in the Netherlands, and one day Muriel heard about a pharmacy that just closed, and the owner put all of his furniture in the street for people to come take it and buy it. So she called Marco and said, you need to come with the van now, and she was able to get her hands on this. It is the perfect height for a kitchen island, so I thought this was just such an incredible find. Muriel's explaining that when they started stripping the walls, they found out the original fireplace must have been much bigger, and this little niche in the wall was used to store the salt. The rest behind it was collapsed, oh. and the big, the big um, stairs on, on the other side were also without parts, so we couldn't go up, so we couldn't see. And then we bought it, and Marco went up anyway, like a monkey. And uh, there was a lot of noise there, and I was standing here like, okay, okay. And then after half an hour, he opened the door, <laughs> and there was Tantadam, a beautiful place with wonderful. Did you have it, but it was new when you, was it new when it's you were? Par partially, it? it's old. The, the lace is antique and uh, some of the, the, fab the fab fabric of the upper top is, is also old. Marco still have so many plans for this chateau. They're currently working on restoring the first floor and they plan to make a big loft area in the attic. I honestly look forward to coming back here when the renovations are finished to see how they've turned this into the gorgeous wedding venue that they envision.
And there is a really wonderful story about this region and this chateau that Muriel shared with my friend. This mm, chateau was built by the finance, for the finance minister of Louis XIV. It used to be an old, like a fortress, just the right, a bit higher, big tower, a moat around, and um, it was uh, a seigneurie with everything that was needed. And then the noble family came and he was Minister of Finance for Louis and they reshaped it in the Louis style. Much nicer, arched windows, more like a chateau. And they lived here for centuries and uh, they owned at least 25,000 hectares of ground all around. And they got richer, richer, married rich, built more chateaus. Where Louis XIV did the hunts and the good wine because this was this little yeah. hill was so one hill of the best of... places to have the wine. Yeah. Wow. And in Burgundy, the people were very stubborn, and they were fine the way they were in their own space. And the King of France wanted to unite. They didn't want that. It was not necessary. They were fine. They, they were, were just like happy okay. with their five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they sent in Jean d'Arc. And she had to unite France, but did it work? Did more not work because um, they were too strong for her. And they took the horses, they took the soldiers inside the walls of so the, so Saint Pierre le Moutier. So the the king's men took the horses and the army away from Jean d'Arc. Okay. No, not not the king's men. Oh, the Burgundies. Oh, they were like the hell no, you're oh, not going. The, it's the, us now against you. Go away. We don't want to be one big France. We want to keep our own. Uh, the right. Burgundy region. The, okay, the, it was rich. It was oh, it, right. it was in abundance, and they didn't want to share it with the whole of France. I see. So Jean d'Arc had to make it whole again, and um, so the horses were inside the walls of Saint Pierre le Moutier, captured, and the ladies that were living there were knitting socks in the night for the horses to put on, so they can go quiet through the streets. They were led into the church where there was a big hidden tunnel that led under the walls of the city and on the other side there was Jeanne and she took back what was hers and she did another attack and she won so France was united again but the people here are still like it's our place it's our place so that's the Burgundy people or the Bourbon people it's the uh, the Bourbonnais Bourbon yeah, okay. so, yeah so the okay yeah. so they're very loyal to it's, the Bourbon house of Bourbon and the Bourbon yeah. name the building style is typical for Bourbonne and you can find it on the other side of the river Allier. There are lots of beautiful places like this, but it's a small region and there are lots of chateaus. Lots. There's one village who has 11 and I think 300 people live there, but they have 11 castles. So it was a very rich region, but a forgotten region. There are a lot of chateaus being restored right now. There's a lot happening here right now, so that's a nice bubble. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we're all connected and everybody helps each other. And that's something I did not expect. When I came here, I was like, okay, it's us. And we are going to try to make friends. But it doesn't happen like that. You, you get friends, whether you want it or not. <laughs> they're standing at the gate. They're like, hi, we have a basket full of nice stuff. Shall oh. we eat? And yeah, it's lovely. It's a lovely place to be. Wow. Yeah. We're really adopted and very happy here. <laughs> oh. You can come here and stay in the holiday home that Muriel and Marco created for a guest. I have included a link to their website in the description box. I am surely going to follow their project. I can't wait to see. With what I've seen so far, this has got to be even more gorgeous when it's finished. Thank you so much, Muriel and Marco, for sharing your home with us. And thank you all for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one.